We are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Life is a Chad YouTube channel. And I thank all of you for being here, wherever you may be. And of course, however you may be listening. Well, we definitely have a little bit of drama in the conservative sphere. And I didn't necessarily want to spend too much time on the drama as much as illustrate and discuss the schism that is beginning to present itself within the conservative movement. And you guys have heard me discuss this often, and there definitely are those of you who are subscribed to my channel mostly for the inter uh, intersexual uh, kind of relationship dynamics uh, type stuff. But this is also very interesting. And this is something that I'm very interested in and enjoy talking about. Uh, I am definitely a very conservative man, have been all of my life. And what I'm talking about of course, is the recent tiff between Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. I'm going to see if I can find the initial Ben Shapiro clip with regards to his comments on Candace Owens, and then I will dive into the rest of it after that. So this is from uh, Paul Joseph Watson's channel. He did a good job of collecting all of the relevant material. And so we'll go ahead and listen to this, of course. And, uh, you know, I think this is a perfect illustration of the schism that is beginning to present itself in the conservative movement. And, I, and I'm, I'm intentionally not calling it the Republican movement because I think at this point, we need to move away from namely referring to ourselves as Republicans because I don't really see myself as that. I see myself as a conservative, a paleo conservative. Uh, and to me and to a lot of conservatives, which I'll get to momentarily, the Republican movement or party, with a few exceptions, like the Democrat Party, does not represent our interests. But let's listen to this what he's saying because it's just ad hominem attacks i don't know because yeah, it's not you know we disagree or yeah. i you know i i don't think she's correct or maybe she doesn't know what she's talking about it's absolutely disgraceful yeah exactly and so i can't respond to it on a level of intellect because they're, they're and that is in reference to ben shahiro and hopefully that clip is presented in this video uh i think it's right here but um i also wanted to play the aspect of this video that shows how off the mark Ben Shapiro really has been on a lot of the major issues. There's nothing that he has expressed in that, at least in that short clip, that he fundamentally disagrees with in terms of what I said. But I will say that I'm not going to respond with the same ad hominem attacks. Yes. I don't think it helps. Ad hominem. Ad hominem. That was caught on a video saying that ad about hominem, hominem. I work with. I would be embarrassed. I would. So I think that the video speaks more to Ben's character than it speaks to mine. Has he texted you to apologize or explain or anything? No, nothing. I haven't heard a single word. She pretty much took the high ground. So maybe you're thinking. So that is that. And here is the Twitter. Boy, tons of Christians. I've given them the freedom and the platform to share their faith. The fight then literally became biblical. Christ is king. We don't believe in the divinity of Christ. I think he was a Jew who tried to lead a revolt against the Romans and got killed for his trouble. Christ is king, really bro. didn't hold back. You've been acting unprofessional and emotionally unhinged for weeks now. We've all had to sit back and allow it and have all tried to exercise exceeding understanding for your raw emotion. But you cross for a certain role. line when you come for scripture and... For your raw emotion. I love how uh, British people do the the R-A-R, -R, the raw emotion, the raw emotion. Read yourself into it. I will not tolerate it. Candice basically. I will not tolerate it. 
practically accusing Ben of allowing feelings to dominate his facts. <laughs> what could she possibly be referring to? Benny threatening nuclear war unless American taxpayers foot the bill for Israel's weapons. If Israel is forced to the wall, the possibility of nuclear exchange is extremely high. That is why it is very important that the United States provide the material aid to Israel. Or his utter meltdown at Tucker Carlson for daring to care more about America than Israel. Again, I, I want to add my voice to that because I'm a human being. But oh, sure you do. The you sound very outraged. What is he even talking about? What he's attempting to do is minimize what happened in Israel. He's not attempting to maximize what happened in the United States. He's attempting to minimize. I just don't understand why he's not on my side when it comes to Hamas has to be wiped off the face of the earth. It's also fast. Okay, so I, I want to stop it there to respond to that. I have done, I think, three videos now with relation to the conflict that erupted in the Middle East. And I have taken the video to different areas to, to brush upon different things in each of the videos. I've discussed the very real possibility of America entering into a complete world war due to its unwavering support of a certain country, which is definitely the Democrat Party, and I highlighted this, is finding itself in a very precarious situation because much the, the Democrat Party is the party that sells itself as the party who cares about the the, the minority group or cares about minority groups in America. And it's not just America that that's the case. I would say that that's across the board. That is modern Western liberalism. They paint themselves as the the party or the ideology that cares for the little guy, for the, for the minorities. And a part of that, and you see it in Germany, you see it in France, uh, as France has essentially been overrun by Islam. You see it in Britain, and you're starting to see it in parts of America, where that viewpoint has supplemented itself to massive amounts of migration from that area to those countries. Illegally, most of the time, okay? <clears throat> and I, I've highlighted in past videos this fact, and I will say it again, that and Paul Joseph Watson credit to him he was the first person I saw this from that there was a document published that shared some of the thoughts of Netanyahu and other Israeli leaders with regards to how to handle this current conflict in the Middle East and namely what to do with the quote unquote to them anyways not I, I definitely see innocent citizens on both sides you guys can can hear my analysis in the separate videos I've done and I have vehemently stated that the biggest losers of situations like this are always the innocent citizens on both sides. But in that video from Paul Joseph Watson, it highlighted the document that shared the idea of simply moving the innocent citizens of Gaza to Western countries. In other words, they would get everything that they want and have wanted for years at the behest of Western countries. And Western countries would have to foot the bill in order for them to carry out exactly what they want and have wanted to do for a long time, aka getting rid of Palestinians, getting rid of Gaza. And this was a hypothesis, but at the time, 
definitely with evidence, but now we definitively see from various news sources. And again, you guys can go and watch the Paul Joseph Watson video yourself. Namely from the Wall Street Journal. Telling us that we should consider that an option, that 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 we should welcome that as an option. That that is a good idea for us, that as American citizens, that is a great idea for us to take them on. The same people who believe and on one side are supporting their right to defend themselves at the expense of innocent Palestinians and Orthodox Christians that live in that area. Because what they did was so bad and so atrocious, they absolutely deserve the right to de de to defend themselves. Also, simultaneously say, well, yeah, just bring those same people here with the, with, with the same ideology. Now, again, granted, I am saying that a lot of them are innocent citizens, okay? But two things can be true at once. They can be innocent citizens of the area they live in, and I can also not want them to come to a country that I inhabit with the morals and judiciary system and laws and everything that encompasses that here in America. Because at the heart of immigration and, you know, people not wanting to lose their jobs and not wanting the economy to be impacted, the main thing is not wanting an ideology that we don't want here. And not, not just that, we don't want to lose our ideology, for, you know, just bro very broadly speaking, that not to occur. That is the main issue with this topic. That is the underlying situation is, you know, when we talk about immigration, we say, <clears throat> why in the world would I be completely okay with people who come from a country in which all of these evils and, and rough and, and terrible living circumstances come here and bring the same mindset that lends itself to that, come here and incorporate that same mindset into the thought pool that is America. So that is what Tucker Carlson was talking about when he said that it is understandable that some Americans are like over it, over the whole idea of uh, unadulterated support when we don't get the same thing for us. When you take into account BLM, uh, various universities attacking whiteness, namely white European males of European descent. Why would we support you unadulterated when you guys are the same people who tell us that we should allow millions of illegal immigrants to come and invade us from the Southern border? Because make no mistake, we have had an ongoing invasion for the last 10 years from our Southern border. So that is what he was referencing. And not only that, not not just the ideology that they bring here, but the but the sad and immoral journey that these people have to undergo in the in the bad horrific crimes that are undertaken as they come into America. The 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 you know such as, you know, grape and things like that. Because oftentimes they don't have the money to pay for the journey. And the only way that they can pay for it is through that type of payment. Not only that, but they there are tons and tons of drugs that have come over the border since the 1980s. But, you know, just to be more specific, since the 2000s that have impacted 
our society and our citizens massively. So that is what he's talking about fascinating to delve into the media coverage surrounding this whole controversy from ground news we learned that out of 23 news so i'm gonna find um see if i can find where shapiro actually said what he said so i found it in his clip here it is <laughs> Faux sophistication. What so, like saying? So no that was essentially it. Uh, that was her comments. But I think there's another aspect of this video that is really, really good, and it highlights how far off Ben Shapiro has been on a lot of the major things that have been going on in America over the last ten or so years. Hitler was right. By coming out with quite possibly his most base tweet yet. The ADL unjustly attacks the majority of the West, despite the majority of the West supporting the Jewish people in Israel. This is because they cannot, by their own tenets, criticize the minority groups who are their primary threat. It is not right. Oh, here it is who's in the wrong. Well, a good rule of thumb is generally to find out what Ben Shapiro thinks about a massive subject, then adopt the opposite opinion. Because <laughs> Benny Boy tends to get the Let's big go, call bro. wrong. Wrong on Trump. Donald Trump is a liar. Wrong on vaccines. The vaccines are extremely effective. If you're vaxxed, you're good to go. Then... Here is the reality. If you have had the vaccine, you're extremely safe from COVID at this point. I've been pushing vaccination since the day that this was available. Do you believe that people should be compelled by law to vaccinate themselves or their children? So this is one of my more controversial positions. My answer is yes. Wrong on Ukraine. Wow. There have been people, including Tucker Carlson, for example, who have suggested wow. that there's a widespread crackdown on religious freedom in Ukraine. I mean, where did he get that? Yeah, that's ben true. Ben has been spectacularly wrong on nearly every single big issue for new. I'm an Orthodox Christian. I can say with 100% certainty that uh, Orthodox Christians in Ukraine are absolutely being silenced and absolutely being suppressed because Ukraine is nothing more than a communistic uh, regime, quite frankly. And, you know, really Ukraine is what America is, but America hides it more. America is able to hide the... Uh, individuals that are really in charge within the shadow government better than Ukraine can. Um, America is essentially a fake democracy that that is really just put out there for to pacify citizens, but in reality behind the scenes is an oligarchy. Nearly a decade. But surely we can trust him when it comes to checks notes. World War Three Right? It's, a little weird. it's a little weird. So he was on the left on those three biggest issues of our time. Ben Shapiro, never Trump, destabilize Syria, compelled vaccination. Wow, bro. Here's a, this is fucking great, dude. A full blown list here. Never Trump. This is J6s. Destabilize Syria, compelled vaccination, opposes J6ers, Ukraine, went for McCarthy from, uh, from California, who is now gone as Speaker of the House, and mass bombings in Gaza he supports. And then, but he's for lower taxes. <laughs> that's like the classic neocon position, bro. Mass bombings in Gaza, but... So that's it. So I just wanted to say a few more things on this topic. So there is a massive rift that is developing within the right-wing conservative movement. And we started to see it with Trump and we saw it with his administration. Now, ultimately, Trump made a massive mistake in making a deal with the establishment. And I'm not sure really what he was hoping to gain from it, but he was elected running against the establishment. But then when he got into office, he hired a lot of establishment people like uh, Speaker Paul Ryan, um and individuals like like him okay uh you know mike pence um uh christy from new jersey i mean all I, the republican party is just as bad when it comes to establishment figures as the left wing and 
you you're really seeing so we saw it in the past with Trump, okay? And in the subsequent elections from then on, who has won as a uh conservative nominee and who hasn't? Now, big mainstream uh conservative outlets neocon outlets and, and let me make it clear the the fraction really is is between neoconservatives and paleoconservative america first individuals okay that is the rift that is occurring george bush would be more of a neocon okay and we have seen it kind of progress and you know Stations like Fox News would lead you to believe, or many conservatives to believe, that all the losses have that the Republican Party has had have been for Trump-backed candidates, which is completely and utterly false. As we have seen with Vivek Ramaswamy, this is not a Trump thing. Trump has not been in office for a few years now. And Amer and the Republican Party has gotten smashed in the elections. Despite Biden being an utter buffoon, despite super high gas prices, despite many things that would absolutely lean in the favor of the Republican Party. But the thing is, is that the American people have been awakened by the Trump movement into the reality of the modern Republican movement. And as Vivek Ramaswamy said, this is all on the shoulders of neocon, relative of John McCain, the current RNC chair. Let me see if I can find her name. Let's see. Just... A quick Google search. Let's see. Uh, RNC chair. Let's see. Vivek. Let's see. Rana McDaniel. That's the name. Rana McDaniel, who is related to John McCain. So you're seeing this rift across the board. And when Trump lost, you started to see the rift really begin to open as all of these swamp swampy creature establishment figures who simply bided their time when Trump was in office and held all the power started to emerge from from whence they came from from the swamp that they inhabit and here we are and and we see this coming to a head with the current conflict that exists within the middle east and you see it specifically with candace owens and ben shapiro because at the end of the day ben shapiro is a neoconservative a neoconservative is somebody who is mostly liberal and definitely establishment with everything except for taxes. They are basically only conservative when it comes to taxes. Now, they may have some traditional leanings and some religious leanings and things like that, but for the most part, they are basically liberals who drive the speed limit. They are basically liberals who, own, who want lower taxes. That's it. That is, that is the one distinction. And this is why we are in the mess that we are currently in, because the American people were not aware of this fact in mass and elected these Republicans, hoping that they would fight the Democrats, but they didn't realize that they were a part of the same committee, the establishment. And then you have, you know, paleo conservative America first individuals like Candace Owens, who genuinely want the best for America and loves America and wants great things for its citizens. Citizens. Whereas 
this current conflict has shown people like Dave Rubin, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, Ben Shapiro and Nikki Haley to be the hawkish neoconservatives that they really are. And never confuse them. You and and that's the mistake. They blend in when, when it suits them. They blend in with conservatives that are that are catching the imagination of the American people when it suits them. And they do a damn good job of it. And and even I fall victim to this sometimes too, where where you start to tell yourself this lot. Like maybe they're changing. Maybe they are changing. Maybe maybe they're changing their ways. No no no. Shapiro's track record is his track record. He is as establishment as it gets. And while they hide it really well, as it says in the Bible, truth always comes to light. It, it always reveals itself. I mean, I don't know exactly which passage says that, but I <laughs> at the moment, but I'm sure it's in there somewhere. So this is going to be very interesting to monitor moving forward. And um, it's a very interesting time. It'll be inter very interesting to see what happens moving forward. Uh, I definitely think that one side is winning. Uh, and people are waking up. And people are realizing that we can no longer vote along party lines. We can no, no longer just put Republicans in just to put them in because we we are in the final minutes here, guys, of this country. And ultimately, it's just as bad to put some goofball uh, Republican who is basically a liberal in office as it would be to have a Democrat in there. Uh, it, it, if there is no America first candidate, then it's just better not to vote at all. And whoever wins, wins. I mean, both options, the 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 hawkish neocon Republican is just as bad as the liberal. So that's pretty much that, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I do have a new camera coming, so hopefully that will improve the quality of the channel. The channel is continuing to grow, and I really thank all of you guys who have decided to join me on this journey and smash that subscribe button. And, and I really hope you consider doing so if you haven't yet. Uh, and uh, I have more content coming for you for you guys in the coming days. Uh, we're going to be re reviewing some whatever clip podcast uh, and a few other things. But uh, I really enjoy talking about things like this because uh, I enjoy politics. I enjoy uh, uh I enjoy a good fight. I'll put it to you that way. And, and this stuff has always intrigued me and will continue to intrigue me. All right, guys, that'll be it for me. Uh, remember, DBAP, don't be a pussy willow and facts or feelings because your feelings just don't matter. Love you, kings. See you guys next time. Crisis King. Peace. Have a good night.